Hey there fellow classic comic collectors, as always I'm Scott Harris King and today I'm back with a big pile of loot that I've gotten recently. Um, I've done so many of these videos that I've actually started to lose track a little bit of what I've shown and what I haven't shown. And, and I don't think that I've shown <clears throat> anything in here, but if I have, I apologize. Um, I'm just uh, a little disorganized right now. Very busy, lots of projects. Um, I did want to say, like, uh, as you know, it's been several several months since I've done my um, uh, dollar bin trading challenge. I haven't given up on that. That is still going to happen. Um, I've been so busy that uh, the trading, as much as I love it, does take up a lot of time. And I've just been so busy that I have not had the time to devote to that. We're also in a bit of a downturn here. The market is correcting from all the crazy heights that it hit during the first year of the pandemic. It's dropping back down. So the value of some of the books are going down. And it's fluctuating so much that it's a little hard for me to keep track of the value and stuff. And uh, so it just... Um, Everything's just sort of come together to put that on, on hold. I have the video recorded from several months ago going over the next round. I just haven't posted it because I just don't have time to actually do trades. But as soon as I do, I'm going to start that back up. Um, in the meantime, uh, I've got a bunch of stuff here from various sources. We've got birthday presents. We've got Kickstarter rewards. And we also went back to my LCS recently for the first time in a while. And I picked up some stuff, mostly subscription stuff, one loan back issue, which I'll show you. Um, <clears throat> but let's just start with my subscription. I'm only subscribed to one comic now. So it's crazy to me to think that because back in the day, um, you know, when I was a kid in the eighties, I was buying over 30 titles a month. Uh, and the combination of the you know, drastically increased cost of comics and the fact that just this, the big two superhero universes have kind of left me behind. Um, I'm down to just one book on my pull list and it's not from Marvel. It's not from DC. It's from IDW because it's Yusagi Yojimbo. And so um, it's been a while since I've been at the comic book store. So I have several issues. Uh, 26. 27. Twenty-eight and twenty-nine. Now, one thing I wanted to mention: those those are the numbers on the front. That's the IDW number twenty-nine. Um, Yusagi Ojimbo, when they moved over here, they started publishing in full color. Uh, traditionally, the book has been in black and white, but now it's in full color. Um, but also, I just wanted to mention the numbering because I've had some discussions with people about this. Usagi Ojimbo has had several volumes, but um, in the interior, they actually keep track of what the original, like the overall numbering would be if it had been from the beginning. And you can see that in this most recent issue here, that this is actually issue number 267. So it says 29 in the front. It's actually 267. So uh, Stan Sakai is getting close to that uh, big 300 number. So um, I'm excited to see what he does when he gets to 300. Um, it's crazy how time passes because it feels like it was just yesterday that this book went to IDW and became color. But obviously not. It's, it's obviously been quite a while if they're on issue 29. So um, got those. Always enjoy that series. It's so good. Uh, I also, I do have a subscription on my pull list for something else, but it's not a comic book. It's Alter Ego. Um, and this is issue 174. Uh, 175. And 176. Now, I haven't gotten around to reading these yet. I always enjoy Alter Ego. Um, it can be a little bit hit or miss in terms of whether what they're covering is something I'm actively interested in. Some of their features, you know, um, th there's some things that are, are useful, like from a historical level. So I really appreciate what Roy Thomas is doing, sort of archiving a lot of this stuff. But when they have like pages of pages of the just like checklists and stuff like that, it just doesn't really help me personally. Um, I also wanted to just show that this uh, 175 with the All-Star Squadron cover is actually a wraparound cover. 
so it's pretty pretty cool pretty cool so and they also have traditionally done a lot of um faucet stuff they have the faucet collectors of america as like an ongoing um backup thing in alter ego the last few pages are always about faucet this time they're on the cover and faucet i mean again i appreciate the comics but i've never gotten into them so there's a lot of faucet content every month that i'm just not that interested in but always a great read when i have time um it can be kind of a dense read sometimes um and i have to be in the right mindset so but at some point when I get in that mindset, I'm going to have plenty of cool reading material. Um, so I mentioned I also got one back issue here. And this won't be a huge surprise because I've been buying things like this for a little while. But it's a Superman 74. But you can see that it's got the DC Universe logo here. And it's the fourth print. So I paid $7 for this. It's in nice shape. Uh, the back cover's dirty. Um... But otherwise, it's in quite nice condition. Uh, rounded corners. I mean, I don't think it's going to get a 9.8, but I think with a clean and press, you could you could get a 9, probably. Um, but these uh, late prints on some of these books can be really hard to find. So I'm, I'm probably just going to be reselling this on eBay. I don't really have a sense of how much it's worth, but I know I can get more than $7 for it. I can make it worth my time. And um, when I go to these comic stores, it can be overwhelming to think, figure out what it is I'm looking for, because these days there's almost impossible for a comic store to have what I'm actually looking for, which are specific old romance books. But I always like to look at the back issues. So one thing that's easy for me to, to do is to look for the funeral for a friend and the death of Superman issues for those late prints. Um, so it's just sort of a fallback if I can't think of anything else to look for when I'm at a store. Um, Okay, let's switch over to uh, Kickstarter, and um, uh, I've got this here. It's Aswang, um, which it sort of is, but actually it's Miskatonic High uh, numbers 14 and 15. And it's a two-part story, so they did something really cool, was you could buy the two issues to if you wanted, but they um, combined the two of them into this one giant uh special that has both stories in it and then they gave it this like um 60s horror mo movie like poster cover um and uh, this series is really good i've talked about it a number of times it's something that i keep close track of uh because they're sort of in a similar space for me in terms of creating comics my series of crime busters uh, has a lot of overlap um with miskatonic high conceptually uh, but they're like way ahead of where I am. So I always watch to see what they're doing to, to see how, how they're doing things. Um, but also it's just a really cool story. It's a cool series. It's well-written. It, the art's cool from Ryan Mendoza. Mike Shea is the writer. So, um, uh, yeah, I was happy to get that. They also do trading cards. Um, when I do my Kickstarters, I always have stretch goals where I do a set of trading cards. So I'm up to like... Uh, after this new Kickstarter, I'll have like 14 cards at this point, but they're way ahead of me on that too because they put out a lot more issues. So here's the latest trading card. Theirs have a much more modern look. Mine are, are specifically designed to look like they're from the 50s, um, but they're up to card number 43 on theirs. So um, that's really cool. At some point, what I want to do uh, is put out like um, get like some... Uh, trading card binders for people to collect the cards and it'll have like crime busters logo on the front or whatever um but that's down the road so anyway miskatonic high um very very happy to get that uh here's something i was not expecting because this sort of came out of the blue um this is not this is a book not a comic it's gideon kane demon hunter now it does have some comic material in it most of its prose um, but there is, um, I'm looking for here to show you. There is, uh, in the middle of it, there is an eight page comic book story as well. Um, so, uh, it's really cool. This is basically a, um, version, uh, sort of a, not a version, but a, like a spin on Solomon Kane. Um, but, uh, the reason I got this is because I actually have a story in this 
because I was part of, I am and have been for since the nineties, part of an online group that's Avengers fans, like hardcore Avengers fans. And, um, a lot of people in that group are like writers, uh, including some of the people that worked on Avengers. Um, and so people were spitballing stuff, talking about Solomon Kane, and it sort of spun out into this idea of what, you know, what people would do to sort of make Solomon, fix Solomon Kane and make him more interesting. One of those people was Kurt Busiek. Um, and so uh, I ended up doing a story in here. Kurt Busiek has done the introduction um, and helped sort of create the character. Uh, so this is like um, the one time that uh, I'm going to have my name on the book where uh, uh, with Kurt Busiek. Um, and, uh, you know, we did this a number of years ago. I don't know, like 15 years ago, 10 years, more than 10 years ago. I think it was closer to 15. Uh, but um, Van Allen Plexico, who is the editor and who does the Sentinels line of um, superhero books, uh, he just sort of contacted me out of the blue and said that they were doing a Kickstarter for this hardcover version, um, reprinting the book. It's been updated. And um, and uh, so I was like, okay, great. So I bought a copy for myself. So Gideon Kane, Demon Hunter. I'm not sure how to get this now. Uh, Van Allen Plexico's website is called the White Rocket. If you go to White Rocket Books, uh, I think it is, or he has a whole series of things branded white rocket you might be able to get copies through him through his website i'll try and put the link down below um if i can find it but um yeah so really cool uh finally we got two birthday presents and i might have shown these already i don't remember showing them um so i'm just going to show them again so if i've, if I've already shown you this again i'm sorry because my birthday was several months ago but these have sort of been on, um, on the pile of floor. I haven't even opened this yet, but at some point I'm going to dig into it. As you know, as part of my recent um, downsizing, I had been putting together a run of Hero for Hire. And uh, I had I had like the first 30 issues. The ones that I was struggling to get were like between issues 30 and 50. Um, and they're not really worth anything, but I was trying to get them for a dollar each. Uh, and so... Um, I ended up selling all of those off. The only one I kept was issue one, but then recently I also sold issue one, uh, to raise money to make comics. But part of the reason that I sold those off is because I knew this was coming out. My wife got it for me for my birthday. It's the Hero for Hire Omnibus, which has all of the entire series up until before, uh, Iron Fist comes in. So it just used, um, one through 47. It also has, uh the annual number one. Um, so it's got all the issues up until the point where they had the um, crossover, the team up with Iron Fist was starting issue 48. And then the series changed titles of issue 50. So um, again, I mean, I, I was basically putting the series together because I wanted to read it. So uh, we got this now. I want to thank my wife very much. She also got this for me as part of my birthday. Um, which I'm really interested in, in digging into it is um, the other history of the DC universe. It's by John Ridley, who um, did uh, those Twelve Years a Slave. He uh, did this here, and it's basically a history of the DC universe, but it's told through the eyes of um, black and other disenfranchised minority characters and superheroes and supervillains and stuff. So I'm really interested uh, to, to dig into this. It's, um, it's sort of part, it's mostly prose, but with illustrations. So, um, stuff like, uh, you know, we got the pictures and then we got the text in the middle, which is telling the story. Um, so it's, whether or not you consider it a comic book is sort of um, up to you, but I would say yes. So it goes through the whole DC universe. I'm, I'm Again, I'm really interested in digging into this. It looks like it's really good. I've heard really excellent reviews on it. So um, some great stuff. Again, my wife got me that for my birthday. So thank you to my wonderful wife. So... That's it for this time around. Again, sorry if I'd already shown some of that stuff before, um, but 
a lot of great reading material not much in the way of back issues but a lot of great reading material this time around so um let me know what you think in the comments down below and i'll see you next time